If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you knew Marms Bobby, guys, Muslim convert stories did it again. Another viral video. This time it is Satanist leaders daring conversion to Islam set social media on fire. You guys really want me to react to this particular video. I just found it so extremely hilarious that this alleged Satanist leader looks like a little child. Guys, before we jump into the video, do me the favor. If you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to further support, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I'm 456 years old. A demon. Oh, yeah. A prophet of the Satanists. I'm sure you are. And at least 15% <laughs> of Turkey will become Satanists. He's Turkish. These, among other things, were what F.A. Zabani claimed while led a group of Satanists and became an internet sensation. He became so popular that he would debate Muslims on behalf of Satanists, challenging some of the teachings of Islam. He claimed he could read the mind too, and his job was to convince people to follow his path. 6 Haziran 2024'de Türkiye'nin yüzde 15'i Satanist olacak. 3 sene önce rüyamda gördüm bunu. Efendi yardımcısının yardımcısıyla beni bu, bunu bana belirtti. İnsani bedendeyim şu an. İnsan değilim aslında. İki tane cinim var benim. 6-6-2024'te Türkiye'nin yüzde 15'i Satanist olacak. Baş kaldırı olacak. Savaş çıkacak tekrardan. Ben ve Legionlarım tarafından. Yeah, I find this very amusing. Not because he later then embraced Islam as the video title suggested, but because people at that age they have no idea what they're talking about. It's absolutely hilarious. When I look back when I was 20 or in my teens, I had so many outrageous ideas and I thought I understand the whole world. When you look into certain rebellious groups, you will see that their recruits are always very young people. You're essentially just a kid that hit puberty and now the hormones are running wild and the kid brain is interfering with a somewhat adult body. This leads to confusion and this leads to all kinds of visions of of grandeur of course therefore when i see this little kid here imagining himself being a jinn he's 450 years old inhabiting this body and therefore he's rocking the pink hair of course i just have to laugh for me it is exactly the same thing when my two-year-old son imagines himself to be a fireman Evet korkuyorlar. Genelde kadınlar, çocuklar, yaşlılar. <gülüyor> Değişiyor yani. Hislerim çok korkuyor. Sen mesela şu an ne düşündüğümü bilebilirim ben. Sana biraz daha bir şeyler düşünüp söyleyeceğim bakalım. Onları bilebilecek misin? De. His appearance yeah, would see. easily lead some people to have some shame, conclusions see, about him. Tell. And in the past, they would be right. Pink hair, multiple piercings on the face, and some immodest choice of clothes was the normal appearance of Efe Zabani. What Efe, many didn't know was, Efe was a boy filled with too many questions and too few people cared to answer them. It was easy to write him off. No, I wouldn't write him off. When I was at his stage in life, I thought I'm a rapper and I will stay a rapper for the rest of my life. I will wear baggy pants to my wedding. Then later on, I became a bodybuilder and I thought I will always weigh 120 kilograms. I thought I will always be super ripped, super jacked. This is the way to go. This is reality. This is the best way to live. Therefore, yet again, in your teens, in your 20s, you go through so much stuff, man. It all will change when you're in your 30s. Believe me. He had the opportunity to debate any Muslim. He always came up with well-prepared questions and evidence to back them up until his last podcast appearance. F.A. first appeared on the Turkish podcast, Underground, about three months ago, where he made the claims previously stated. Three months later, the host of the channel invited F.A. again. This time get his questions answered by a person well-versed in Islamic knowledge. The host also revealed he had been in constant communication with Efe since his last appearance. What happened in the podcast? Did Efe find the truth he sorely sought? Did he become a Muslim? And how did it happen? Watch this video till the end to find out. As usual, 
if it came with an arsenal full of questions and scriptures to quote to back up his claim. He started his barrage of questions, which includes cliches like violence against women, violence against non-Muslims, restrictions. How is Allah behind the good of the world when evil also happens? Okay, Does so he the cause question those of evil two? over and over again. These so and many the more question. were the questions he was seeking answers. But it is, of course, ironical that if God is so unjust in your eyes, you're asking why is there evil to then embrace Satanism, which ultimately means you're reversing the moral standards and you embrace the doctrine, do as thy wilt. This is the satanic doctrine that dictates you can do whatever you like. And nowadays in the liberal times that we are living in, you have a sort of liberal Satanism in which they say you can do whatever you want without hurting anybody. And this essentially equates Satanism to liberalism, which is pretty hilarious if you ask me, because you can do whatever you want, you can follow your desires with no restrictions as long as you don't hurt anybody. Of course, there is no further real implication into this. Hurting somebody is only examined on a surface level, of course. You cannot physically harm somebody and you cannot say certain bad things to certain groups of people, but you can say it to others if you like. It is a hypocritical double standard, of course. Then there is another a form of Satanism where you don't have God at all. This is essentially the Satanism that is equivalent to atheism. But yet again, even if you take that stance, the question is why would you then complain about an unjust God? The answer to this is because all of those people are frustrated and their fitra is screaming out. They all do believe in God somewhere deep inside and therefore they're wrestling with the outside world. They don't understand why evil appears in the world. In Islam, we have an explanation for that as well, of course, because everything is a test. Certain things appear bad to us, but in reality, they're good to us. And other things, they appear very, very good to us, but in reality, they're very, very bad for us. Islam gives an explanation for that phenomenon. From his behavior and choice of words, it was easy to conclude that while he may appear antagonistic, he was willing to submit if he finds answers. He said more than once, convince me, maybe I will believe. İslam dini gerçek bir din olduğuna kanıtlasak sana. Bu sefer diyecek misin ben bu zamana kadar boşa yaşamışım? Kanıtlayamazsınız ki bunu bana. Niçin kanıtlayamayalım? Kanıtlayın o zaman konuşalım. Tamam bunu konuşacağız. And this is why this is absolute comedy to me. Because if this kid truly was possessed by some sort of demon that is 450 years old. That demon then that came here with a mission. This is what he claimed, right? This demon would be then on his mission. And therefore nothing could ever convince that demon. But now the kid sits down and says, Okay, let's talk. It is just teenage delusion. Just as the kids in the West now think they're boys, girls, or everything in between. The same applies to this young kid here thinking he's a demon. I've admitted he once prayed before, and he felt peace when he did that. In fact, he was a Muslim as a child. To encourage him, the hosts encouraged him that his questions are not out of place and he should ask more questions in his quest for answers. This he can do while studying Islam. Efe Zimani revealed his excitement at the opportunity to visit the Kaaba. Noting that he could not do that in his current state and appearance, he wondered if he would experience peace there like he had imagined. His host promised to take him to the Kaaba if he promises to become a Muslim. There he reiterated that he would love to become a Muslim if his questions are convincingly answered. After thinking about it for a few minutes, Afif finally decided to become a Muslim and take the Shahada on air. That wasn't hard. I pray for the Lord and the Lord of the Lord and the Lord of the Lord and the Lord of the Lord. How good it is. He went further to observe prayer with a group. In concluding the video, the host promised that Efe would be circling the Kaaba by the time the video is released. And this I can confirm to be true as Efe posted videos of himself in Mecca a few days ago. MashaAllah. Efe was the face of so many impressionable youths who are continuously seeking unchecked freedom to act and appear as they like with some. Like Efe are taking it a notch higher by subscribing to Satanism and the worshipping of things they have no idea about. He was very popular online. 
All right, guys, so this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. If you want to watch the full video, please head over to Muslim Convert Stories. There you can watch the rest and many, many more amazing videos. That being said, Muslim Convert Stories in the end mentioned that F.A. was preaching to many impressionable teenagers. The point of the story is that he is an impressionable teenager himself. And ultimately, he was just looking for guidance. That's really what it boils down to. Everybody has a rebellion in their heart, but as a teenager, this is particularly strong. And then if you do not find answers, you will look elsewhere. And that is human nature. At first, this is the parents' job, of course, but sometimes the parents fail. And then the children look outside. The first thing that leaves an impression onto them, they adapt. Uh, they see it as the holy grail. I know it myself because, yes, I used to be young myself. And everything that appears to be good at first, you adopt. And then later on, you realize, oh, well, that was stupid. I'm not a 450-year-old demon after all. So therefore, out of personal experience, yet again, guys, I would really suggest to you, if you're younger, not to look up to people that are in their teens, 20s, even 30s can be tricky with some people. Honestly, real wisdom is acquired way later in life, 40s, 50s, 60s, nowadays. That is, if we're looking back into history, you have many great men in their 20s. However, all of that has shifted. Nowadays, men in their 20s are most of the time just boys. And therefore, to get your education, your knowledge, your information from those people, 99.9% .9 will lead you astray. Because the real consequences of your teenage years, of your 20s, you will find out later on in life. As I said, for example, me when I was a teenager in my early 20s, I was into hardcore bodybuilding. I was lifting weights like a maniac. Nowadays, in my 30s, I have damaged joints. I have ruptured muscles. I have countless of injuries. This is because I didn't know how to properly train. I was in the gym without a trainer. I had to figure out everything myself. And of course, that formed me as a character. I learned many, many things. And nowadays, I know right from wrong in the gym. But that being said, if I would have had a guidance, somebody that would have guided me through the process, a mentor, I could have saved myself all of that damage. And nowadays, I see the damage that I have done. So now when I go to the gym and I see a teenager lifting with an arched back, I of course see it as a duty to correct the form of that kid. But I know how it is. When you're a teenager, you cannot listen to anybody. You think you are on the right track. You think you're doing the right thing. And that can be anything in life. That can be a sport. That can be an ideology. That can be a diet. That can be a religion even. That can be many, many things. You think you're on the right path. You've seen other people do it as well. And therefore, you have to do exactly the same thing. Then you might get a little bit of praise from other teenagers. And next thing you know, you believe you're channeling demons. You're creating the next religion. And so finally, I want to use this video to speak to the older Muslims. And yes, if you're over 30, you are already older. Teenagers are already half your age, man, if you're 30 years old. And they look up to you if you have something to look up to. If you don't, they won't. But therefore, it is very important to understand how the teenage mind ticks as well. If you simply preach Islam to them the same way that you preach Islam to older people, it won't resonate with them. So you just have to put yourself into the perspective when you were a teenager. And many, many Muslims that now have become practicing as teenagers were not practicing. In their 20s, they were not practicing. And the real question is, of course, why they weren't. And the answer to that question is, it did not fit their reality. What do I mean by that? It did not fit their reality because the reality of a teenage mind or a 20-year-old mind is very, very different from an older mind. As a teenager, you find girls super attractive, certain music you're listening to, dance festivals or what not. You have many, many distractions as a teenager. And those things appear to be more valuable than the alternative. And this is why teenagers and people in their 20s, not all, but many of them, do not practice any type of religion. But later on, when they see their own shortcomings, they return to religion yet again, or they embrace Islam, they revert to Islam. So therefore, to solve this dilemma simply, you as older Muslims have to present Islam as something attractive to the teenagers. And not only by focusing on Islam solely, I would make the argument, but by achieving things in your life and attributing thanks to God. Alhamdulillah, we all think of Habib Nurmagomedov when we hear that nowadays. And this is a prime example because Habib shined with his performance but always attributed thanks to God. 
And like this, people got interested in Islam. I know many people firsthand that reverted to Islam because of Habib. The same applies to figures like Andrew Tate. You might not like the materialistic worldview, but guess what? Teenagers do. Teenagers do not think about the afterlife. Teenagers do not think about death yet. They're in their best years. They're present in the moment. They're not thinking about tomorrow. And therefore, of course, their consciousness is extremely materialistic. That's just what resonates with them. During the time of teenage years, all you're thinking about is eating, sex, drinking, partying, all of those things lusts, all of those passions come up in your young body because you're living in the present moment. You're not thinking about consequences. And then you have people like Andrew Tate that shine with their riches, shine with their women. And now I don't have to mention that many aspects of his previous life are haram. Duh, we all know that. But the point of the story is he made the shift to Islam. And the teenage mind then questions, why would a man that had it all, he has the cars, he has the money, he has the women, why would he accept Islam? What's in it for him? Anyways, just a few things to think about. In the end, of course, I want to congratulate Efe for reverting to Islam. Alhamdulillah. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.